Hey everybody, happy Sunday. Happy beautiful Sunday. Welcome to Warrior DNA, another oh, issue. It's cold it outside. Is a little chilly. Baby, it's cold outside. It's not Christmas though. <laughs> Isn't that a Christmas I was song? trying to get you to sing with me. Oh my goodness, yes. you guys won't believe what just happened. What just happened? So oh. I was studying for today, like what we're gonna talk about, which is like totally correlates with this. But I'm sitting and I'm looking out my window, and I'm not kidding, hundreds upon hundreds of hundreds of birds all flock in on this one bush that we have with lots of berries on it. It was, the, it was like that movie, The Birds. Yes. Like, it was wild. And she tells me to come over and take a look at it, and I scared them all off. He did. And then I got... <laughs> I didn't mean to. <laughs> I was like, well, that was not exactly what I had in mind. Oops. However... That is kind of what we're talking about today. I thought, how neat is that, that that was about what we're talking about today. Uh, as you guys know, we have been going through our book, Unleashed and Anointed for Business, and we're about halfway through. This week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we're going to be talking about the process of transformation uh, in M Nation. We're getting ready to launch the emnation.org website. Uh, we've already got Impact. We've got M Women. That's Impact is for the men. EM women is for obviously the women and uh, but we are we have a motto it's a four process motto you can go to emwomen.com and see it of how to transform someone's life no matter what they've been through no matter whether it's relationship transformation whether it's financial transformation whether you've been through rape abuse uh, come out of prison we use a four-step process embrace educate equip and empower and this week, we're going to talk about that four-step process. Every single day, embrace, educate, equip, and empower. Most churches do really good on embrace. Let's just bring them in, love them, um, and educate them to some degree. Usually, um, you know, bring in, tell them a, something on Sunday that makes them feel better for their week and to be able to go out, and we love it. Um, but the equip and empower is the whole point of the gifts of the Spirit. And so the gifts of the Spirit are, are there to equip the body of Christ, whether it's prophecy, whether it's healing, whether it's miracles, whatever it is. And we're going to talk about that this week because we want you equipped, no matter what you've come through. Yes, we love you, but we love you too much to leave you there. But we want you equipped to do what God's called you to do because what God is calling you into is amazing. And empower. We want to empower you to go Empower out. is when we like like an arrow, deploy you into your greatness, whatever your job is, whatever your, we help you with job skills, training, all of that. But mm -hmm. that's the final step is empower and help you get your group started. If you want to start an M women group or an impact men's group, or now we've got ignite that's getting ready to start here in the next couple months with uh, the millennials. So that's pretty exciting. Yeah. Exciting times. It is today. Our topic is everyone is doing it. So it must be right, right? You're saying no. 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 Why is that, Larry Wallace? A lot of times if everybody's doing it, that means that's what the crowd is doing. Sometimes the crowd isn't always making the best choices. Yeah, I had kind of a rough week this week. Can I say that on Facebook Live? Yeah. I'm always so happy, happy. <laughs> But this week, um, I just had a lot of voices of opposition. Mm -hmm. and, and, and most of it was mental. Like, you know, you're, what are you doing? You guys are worth so much more in the marketplace. You should go back to the marketplace. You're worth hundreds of thousands of dollars right now. You could go get a job. You know, and every, there were just all these voices trying to get me to think that my worth is not what we're doing right now. I'm gonna cry. Oh no, don't cry. <laughs> but I know that if I'm feeling those voices, somebody else is feeling them too in your own little world. Yeah. And it's those voices that we talk about that try to get us to stop what we're doing. And everybody's doing it, so it must be right, right? Everybody is building their careers and everybody's making lots of money and, and paying for their houses and doing the things that make you popular in this world and they're building their... I mean, I have had such a struggle even posting on Instagram for like the last number of months because it's just been like I... 
my pursuit has not been looking for approval. Yeah. My pursuit has you and I been pressing into the word, getting closer to God. And when I shut out the rest of the world, I feel so peaceful. It's like when it's just my eyes are focused on him, seek ye first the kingdom of God. I don't, but the minute I get on this and I start scrolling and I'm not going, mm. oh, oh, I could be doing that. Oh, could be doing that. Could be doing, why am I not doing that? And why? Okay, now I feel crummy. I think that's what social media, that's probably one of the downfalls of social media is that if you start doing this whole comparison-itis, you know, trying to compare yourself to other people and then it's a trap. You know, a lot of people get in that trap and they just don't get out. I think about the statistics on people who are um, committing suicide or taking drugs or Suicide is the number two cause of death. And it's like, and it's, and how, how come that is correlating with social media? You know, and here we are, we're using social media to deliver a message, but social media can be used for marketing, social media can be used for building a business, social media can be used for staying in contact, but when you allow that to go that step farther to where when you post a picture, now your um, self-worth is dependent upon how many likes, or if you post a video, or how many uh, views that you get, then that becomes a problem. Yeah, and so I see that Debbie just posted comparison prison, Mm. and it is so true. So when your whole world, so you guys can coach me right now. So I'm giving y'all permission on Facebook Live to like totally preach back to me because everyone needs that ability to listen. And this week I had just so many voices going, what are you doing? Um, You're not really making a difference. You should be back in business. That's where you sizzle. That's where you shine. That's where everybody goes, ooh, Stacy, and, you know, hands you trophies and awards, and your flesh feels so good. But there's something inside of me, like I told you, in 2017, it was as if God removed the fuse of go self-promote and market. And all I wanted to do was spend time in the presence of God. All I wanted to do was tell people. I mean, the more I read scripture, the more I realized there's going to be a lot of people in church um, that are going to go at the end of, in, end of their life and they're going to go, God, but I prophesied and I prayed and I did all these things for you. And um, I, I, I went to church every Sunday and I, I even showed up at people's funerals. And he's going to say, get away from me. I don't know you. Because deep down in their heart, they didn't pursue the things of God. They didn't know him. Maybe they said a prayer at one point in their life, but they didn't pursue them. And I care more about reaching people than I do about whether or not I have social acceptance. But I have to tell you, it is not an easy life. Because you deal with your flesh. That's why fasting and praying is so important because of those voices. And this week, in the middle of it all, I had a dream. And in the dream, it said, unquestionable obedience will produce uncommon miracles and manifestations. And I want to see miracles and manifestations for people's lives more than any trophy, more than anything I could gain. I want to see people's lives change. And so today I wrote down this, I put unquestionable, because this is on the topic of what we're about to talk about. Unquestionable obedience yields uncommon fruit. Let me say that again unquestionable oh i see brandon chesting y'all are making a bit y'all are making a very huge difference thank you brandon that means a lot Mm -hmm. (laughs) unquestionable obedience yields uncommon fruit well today we're going to talk about a story i'm really going to read a lot of scripture because i believe there's healing in the scripture so we'll tell a couple stories of amazing things that happened, like a miracle story of a guy named Bill who was a photographer. Mm. Call Bill the photographer. Just remember that because at the end I'm going to tell this story. It's going to blow your logic. It's absolutely unbelievable. But in the Bible, there was a group of people. Obviously, Moses and the Israelites were promised this land of milk and honey. We feel the calling that God's got something great for you. God, you hear it. Like I'm always talking to Brandon and all these other people that are in impact and in women. God's got a plan and a purpose for your life. And you know, it's, it's true. He's got so much in store. Like we have so many dreams about, you know, just even 
wanting to get the RV and travel around the United States and pray for people and do kickstarts everywhere, just kickstarting, equipping people into the body of Christ and having our, our ranch that's our equipping leadership development camp. And this morning I woke up and I, I want a Chick-fil-A. I want a Chick-fil-A because I want to teach kids how the importance of understanding business principles, but in a really good setting. And so I've got all these dreams and visions. And then some days I wake up and it's like, this gigantic giant of a voice going, you will never accomplish that. <laughs> You're almost 50. You're yeah. getting old. Who That's do you think you are? Called the voice of the adversary. It is. Mm -hmm. And I really believe that God has a land flowing with milk and honey for you as well. But if you Listen to those voices, the voice of the adversary. You will not, let me say it again, say it with me in stereo. You, you will, will not. not inherit the blessing or the land that God has for you. You just won't. Mm -hmm. Scripture says a man who is unstable in his thoughts is like a ship tossing to and fro. One day I'm good, next day I'm bad. One, that's why when I have weeks like this, I spend more time in the word of God than I do anything else because I know the word of God is like life and, and blessing and miracles to my bones, to my body. It's why we live so empowered in our physical bodies because we constantly take it in. And I say that because every person, I've never met a leader, a preacher, a pastor, a president, a CEO. I've never met a leader who doesn't deal with that mental opposition. And maybe you're feeling good one day because you got really good, like I did great contouring on my nose today. <laughs> and I'm like going rocking the nose today. I don't know if y'all ever noticed that, but like I always look back and go like, check out her nose, that's awesome. <laughs> but so I'm feeling like good in the physical, but then you've got these voices that are nye, 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 you know, nye. You know our friend Jill Chambers out in Tennessee, she calls them mind monsters. Mind monsters. Yeah. But it's, it's true, it's, it's that, you know, if you allow those voices to get louder than the voice of the Holy Spirit, then you need to stop, drop to your knees and start praying. And stop, drop and roll. Stop, drop to your knees and roll it on God. Mm -hmm. Cast your cares on him for he cares for you. Um, if you listen to those voices, if you conform to the patterns of this world, which is mediocrity, doing what everybody, if you don't dream big and have big, hairy, audacious goals that do amazing things for God, you will not see in this lifetime everything God had in store for you. Mm -hmm. You just won't. It'll be like having $7.3 billion in your bank account and never accessing it one time because you just didn't really think you could. You mm. never went on a trip. You never went out and did stuff with your family because you lived just what you could see. But Imagine if God has that kind of abundance, if God has a land flowing with milk and honey, if God has seen your goals and says, I can see your goals, I up your goals by two, mm -hmm. like a little poker game with God. Imagine if you went all in with God and said, yes, that is called unquestionable obedience. Okay. So listen to this. I want to read what happens. Say yes to God's ridiculous plan and you will see your breakthrough. I want to read you something from Numbers 13.1. Now bear with me because I'm going to read a lot of scripture right now. And if you will allow it, scripture is like medicine to your bones. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It's better than any scalpel, any knife. Let this come over you. And if you've got a big dream in your business or you've got a big dream in your relationship, or maybe you're wanting to play for the NBA, or maybe you've got a dream that you want to be signed with some big record company. What I want you to think about right now is what can God do? And if you believe that he can do anything, will you say yes to whatever he asks of you? If he suddenly says, give up everything, like he said to the rich young ruler, would you say yes? If he said to you, you know what? I want you to cut your hair off and go with a whole new identity. Will you say yes? Because some people are like locking the locks. <laughs> if he said to walk away from that relationship of fornication that you know is wrong, Ooh. will you say yes? If he asked you to put down the pornography and the things that feel so good to your flesh because you're lonely, will you say yes? I want you to think right now when I read this, what is the yes in your life? Now watch what happens. Numbers 13. The Lord now said to Moses, send out men to explore the land of Canaan 
the land that I'm giving to the Israelites. Send one leader from each tribe across all the 12 tribes. So Moses did. Moses said yes. Mm -hmm. Moses had unquestionable obedience. Now the unquestionable obedience, just send out the tribe because I'm getting ready to give you this land, Moses. I want you to send out the 12 tribes, the leaders from the 12 tribes. I want you to see what the land is like. Find out whether the people living there are strong or weak. This is what Moses is saying to the boys. I need to know, are they strong? Are they weak? Few or many? See what kind of land they live in. Is it good? Is it bad? Do their towns have walls or are they unprotected like open camps? Is the soil fertile or is it poor? Are there many trees? Do your best to bring back samples of the crops you see. It happens to be the season for harvesting in the first ripe grapes. Now, you guys know that Larry and I stepped out of our sales careers in order to do this, in order to, to talk to you guys. But I want to speak to some of you who have a sales business. When you, one of the reasons why I was able to do well, because you were always in corporate and I was in the field. When I went into a direct sales company, for example, I always looked at their compensation plan. I looked to see, do they have big grapes, little grapes, short grapes, fat grapes? Um, where is the weight positioned on that compensation plan? Because I had learned over time to strategically master compensation plans so that I could run a compensation plan to the top of the plan in the shortest amount of time possible. And I'm not saying that to put a feather in my cap. What I'm saying is there's a principle here that I want you to get. Because when you are able to see, not with a, oh my word, like it's going to take somebody five years to get to the top of that plan. Instead of saying, okay, so you just need to do this in order to, obviously if people are at the top of the plan, then I can get to the top of the plan. I just have to do X, Y, and Z. And so in every company I was with, I broke every record of speed to the top ranks of the plan. What does that mean for you? How you see what's in front of you will determine what type of effort you put towards it. Now watch the way, are you following with me? Are you thinking, where is she going? No, I know. You do? I, I'm actually, I was thinking of, of stories along the way. Can I have a drink of your big daddy mug? You know, when you're talking about, uh, you know, focusing on what's in front of you, I, I remember back when, actually right around the time we, we got married, I was doing a lot of um, mountain bike riding. And I had a couple of buddies that we used to go around the area lakes and, and do the mountain bike riding on these trails. And one of the things that I learned early on is when you come up to a ravine, there's usually like a, a two by four or like a, a, a four by, no, it was like a, two, a six by two or something like that. That was like just a board that was put across the ravine. And whenever you approach that board, if you focused on the ravine, guess where you ended up in the ravine? If you focused on the board, you could get across that uh, ravine without any problem. And I realized early on, is like, okay, I gotta focus on that board because if I focus on the ravine, it's gonna hurt. But if I focus on the board, 100% of the time, I gotta cross without any problems. That is the same principle in any type of business, any type of goal setting. If you focus on the obstacles, you will be overwhelmed by the obstacles and you will grow completely fatigued, emotionally, physically, like this week hearing the voices, hearing the voices. And if I focus on them, I will quit. I'll give up, I'll go back to what I was doing. But that's why it's so important to have the word of God, have your goals in front, whatever it is, focus on what you want to see. So eventually you will have what you've been seeing. Now here's an even deeper one. Say what you want to see, speak to those goals so that you will eventually see what you've been saying. So here you've got a situation where, you know, even in the, the direct sales space of wanting to climb those numbers, I didn't look at the lower ranks. They, those were just like rungs in a ladder to me. I had my eyes focused here and I looked at the numbers and then I did what's called chunking the goals backwards. I, I used to not do this or share this because it was like my secret sauce. I'd love to do classes on it. Chunk it backwards and then chunk it down to time fra fragments or time blocking so I knew every single week what I needed to accomplish in order to capitalize on a specific rank within a year. Mm -hmm. So in the last company that we were within, within nine months, boom, clipping it off. And I know there's other people that do the same thing. So it's not like it's unique to me. There's other people that do it as well. But that's what these guys missed in numbers is they 
heard about this wonderful opportunity and this big goal and this land flowing with milk and honey. But watch what happens. So Moses says to him, please go check it out. Find out what all the details. He didn't say, I want your opinion about whether or not you think we can conquer the land. He said, tell me how much good, just like David, what's in it for the guy that kills this Goliath? Mm -hmm. he, he didn't ask, can I kill Goliath? Yeah. Is it possible? He just said, what's the bounty yeah. for well, the person who says an unmistakable, unquestionable yes to God? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he didn't really care about the act of killing him. He was wanting to see what was in it for him. <laughs> so verse 22, 23 says, and this is Numbers 13. When they came to the valley of Eshcol, they cut down a branch with a single cluster of grapes so large that it took two of them to carry it on a pole between them. It reminds me of my wild boar hunting. Because we didn't shoot guns. We would go in and we would rope the wild boars after the, horses, after the dogs got them. And then we would take and we'd rope their hind feet and their forelegs. And then we'd stick a pole and we'd carry them out so we could fatten them up. Well, that is exactly what they were supposed to do. They were sp supposed to bring back those grapes. It was grape season, by the way. There were pomegranates and other things. But that just happened to be grape season that they went into. They were supposed to bring them out and fatten up the faith of the people back home. Right. But instead, they twisted infirmity. The word infirmity means twisted. So when you see somebody who's had an infirmity for 18 years, or in the Bible, the Pool of Bethesda, an infirmity for 38 years, that is a twistedness, not only of the physical body, but a twistedness mentally. Those guys got twisted because of what they heard and what they saw. Watch this. But the people living... Oh, so anyhow, so he comes back with all the, the pole of the grapes. They also brought some samples of pomegranates and figs. Verse 27. This was their report to Moses. Now, I want you to think about how sometimes you get down on yourself and you're like, oh, I can't do this. It's like, that was me this week. <laughs> I love nobody. <laughs> I honestly should. Nobody loves me. Everybody hates me. I'm going to go eat worms. <laughs> Big ones, little ones, short ones, fat ones. I'm going to go. That was kind of what I was in and out of it, but I was just having one of those weeks like. Oh, and I'm going to tell you guys when we get towards the end, how you how you battle that, because there, there is a, a technique on how you can battle that. But let's keep going. OK, verse 27. I don't want to eat worms anymore. No, I, I feel great. Mm -hmm. But I, I want you to know that like this deal that we do every day, like we do, we come on here and we share our faith. But it doesn't mean that it's not a struggle. It doesn't mean that there's not voices. It doesn't mean that there's not a, a daily temptation to give it all up and go back to what we were doing. Mm -hmm. But God keeps saying, will you say yes? Unquestionable obedience will produce uncommon fruit. Watch this, verse 27. This was their report to Moses. All right, yo. So we entered the land you sent us to explore, and it is indeed a bountiful country. It's a land flowing with milk and honey, as you have said, but here's what the fruit it produces. Shows them the grapes. But whoa, 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 before you get all excited about those grapes, check this out, verse 28. But the people living there are powerful. Their towns are large and fortified. We even saw giants there, the descendants of Anak, the Amicalites live in the Negev, and the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites in the hill country, the Canaanites, all the ites are going to kill us. <laughs> they live along the coast of the Mediterranean Sea and all along the Jordan Valley. So they're like all those voices at one time saying, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. You're going to fail. You're not going to make it. You know, this is too big for you. But Caleb, say, but Caleb, but Caleb, say it like with passion, but Caleb <laughs> tried to quiet the people as they stood before him. Have you ever tried to quiet those voices with nothing but your own voice? Oh. You can't do it. Mm. Like, <laughs> or you put on a good Jonas Brothers song. Jonas Brothers came out with a new album or something like that. I don't that. get it. I don't either. Oh, whatever. You were singing <laughs> so last night. We're playing Uno and he's like, something 3000. I don't even know the song. Like you knew every word of that song. I don't know what you're talking about. All right. You can't prove it. You don't mm. have it on video. I will get that on video because it was awesome. I was like, what's the deal with the Jonas Brothers? And he starts ripping out the Jonas songs. I'm like, what? Okay. 
But Caleb tried to quiet the people as they stood before Moses. Let's go at once. Let's take this land. Yes, they're big, but they're so big. Imagine if we take them down and God has already told us that we're going to get them. That like silences the majority of all this land. So Caleb was seeing the opportunity of, of really dominating because if you dominate the Amorites, the Hittites, the Canaanites, the Ibelites, the Dilalites, the Falalites, if you take out all of them, then who's going to ever take you? Yeah. And, and here's the crazy thing. They've spent the last 40 years wandering around the desert, eating the same thing every day. And they're going to sit there and, and look at the people versus look at the, the... And they've seen so many miracles. Oh, time and time again. And, and that's the amazing thing is like, they're, they're focusing on the wrong things. They're eating manna they're every eating manna day, complaining. Every day. I can't believe they can I can have pomegranates, and then comes huge grapes. grapes. At some milk, point, it's just honey. like, it is so worth it. I am so sacrificed in my life. I'd be like William Wallace. <laughs> Freedom! <laughs> so take it. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> We love that, that that's a mentality though, you know, that's the mentality of some people. But how do you get to that place where you have that forge the hill mentality like Caleb and like Joshua? I'm going to keep reading. So verse 31, but the other men who had explained the land with him went, stop, uh-uh, they disagreed with Caleb. Now imagine everybody else that went except for Caleb and Joshua, if everyone believes it, it's right, isn't it? Mm -mm. If everyone's doing it, it's right, right? No, watch this. You'll know. But the other man who had explained the land disagreed with him. We can't go up against them. They're stronger than we are. So they spread this bad report about the land. Ooh, voices, lice, and insects. The land we traveled through and explore, explored will devour anyone who goes to live there. All the people, all, all. All, it's not all. They didn't see all the people. All the people that lived there were huge. Well, did they go and look at every single person? That little spy thing, did they? No. And if they were so bad, how did they make it out alive? That's what all, I know. They said all the people were so huge. We even saw giants there and the descendants of Anak next to them. We felt like grasshoppers and everyone thought we looked like grasshoppers too. Mm. No, they didn't. That was in your mind. So right now you're thinking, everybody hates me. I'm going to go eat worms. That's in your head. And so Joshua and Caleb were like, there's like the devil voice and then there's the angel voice. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. And then there's like, you can do it. You can do it. <laughs> Numbers 14. Here's the question. Who, who, who are you listening to? Mm, that's good. Because if God says he's for you, who, who, who can be against you? Mm -hmm. If God is on your side, whom shall you fear? If God has given you a promise, don't you give up, let up, or shut up until the good Lord takes you up. You take the land that he has promised you. Verse 14. All right. Or chapter 14. Then the whole community began to weep out loud. Now listen, who did they listen to? Did they listen to the couple of people that were like, Trust us. You know what? We've given up everything, but God is faithful. And then you've got this whole world going, make money. Do everything you can to make your flesh happy. And so you've got all these voices saying, conform, conform, conform. And then there's these few voices that are like, no, there's a better way. There's a better. So you've got Joshua's and Caleb's and watch this. Then the whole community, whole, say whole. Whole. Do you know what whole means? Everyone. Everyone. Everyone, everyone was against Caleb and Joshua. Have you ever felt like that? Everyone. The whole community began weeping out loud. They cried all night long. Goodness gracious, that had to be annoying. Their voices raised, rose in a great chorus of protest against Moses and Aaron. Think about this. This is like Trump on a good day. <laughs> like, rah, rah, rah. I don't care if you're our leader. Nothing you say, we're, we're not going to pray for you. We're not going to be with you. I don't care if you are trying to make America great again. Well, we don't care. I don't care if you voted for Trump or not. At some point, you got to see yourself in the v scripture here. Moses and Aaron, if only we had died. This is what the people said. If only you, Moses and Aaron, we, we let us die in Egypt. Even here in the wilderness, they complained. 
Why is the Lord taking us to this country only to have us die in battle? Our wives, our little ones, they're going to be carried off as plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to return to Egypt? Then they plotted among themselves, let's choose a better leader. Let's go back to Egypt. Let, we need a new president. That's what they're saying. We need a new pastor. Ooh, fraction. Mm. Instead of taking responsibility for themselves to say yes, mm -hmm. they're going to blame it on the leader. Well, the leader made us do this. Well, they obviously have been leading us astray. No, we have got to rise up and say yes to the things of God. This gets so good. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces on the ground before the whole community of Israel. Two of the men who had explored the land, Joshua and Caleb, tore their clothing. They said to all the people of Israel, the land we traveled through and explored, it's a wonderful land. And if the Lord is pleased with us, if he said we can, then the land is ours. He will bring us safely into that land and give it to us. It is a rich land flowing with milk and honey. Do not rebel against the Lord and don't be afraid of the people of the land. They're only helpless prey to us. God's already told us he would give us them as plunder. He's already promised us victory. Your only defeat comes if you believe in what these people are saying that you can't. When God has already told you you can. I hear the inner black Stacy going, preach girl. <laughs> That's right. Because I have that. And I have a hanky. I do. <laughs> Come on, girl. You say that on the basketball court. Come on, girl. Get yourself up. Let's go. But the whole community began about talking about Joshua, stoning Joshua and Caleb. So it's just getting worse, right? The more positive they are, it's like, you guys are so super spiritual. Like, you guys are freaking out right now. And you're going to get all of our families killed because of all your ridiculous faith. Man, I hear a lot of those voices nowadays, too. They then the glorious presence of... Did you have something else you wanted to say? No. You got a lot of scripture to go through. Let's keep going. Okay. <laughs> Are y'all getting anything out of this? Because like, I'm just making myself happy. <laughs> I am. You Come are. on, girl, somebody said to me. <laughs> then the glorious presence of the Lord. Then the glorious presence of the Lord. The glory of the Lord showed up. He did not show up because he was happy with those people. He did not show up because he was coming to say, I'll oh, bless your pee-picking hearts. Come on. I just want to embrace you right where you are. Jesus loves you. No, he was about to come open up a can of mm -hmm. booty Worm. whooping on yeah, him. Yeah, big worms. <laughs> and the Lord said, so he, the glory of the Lord fills the temple, the tabernacle. And the Lord says to Moses, how long are these people going to treat me? With such contempt, do you realize that when you doubt God, you treat him with contempt? If he told you he's for you, if he told you to get up and walk boldly, then get up, say yes. Unquestionable obedience will yield uncommon fruit. Yes. He said, how long are these people going to treat me with contempt? Will they never believe me? Even after the miraculous signs I've done, even after everything I've brought them through, even after the manna, even after the plagues, even after all this, even after the sea... After all these miracles, you mean to tell me they still think I am unable? God was getting a little offended right there. He had his hanky out. Oh, yes, he did. <laughs> he said, I will disown them. I'm going to destroy them with a plague. Then I will make you a nation greater and mightier than they are. Mm. I am quite amazed that people think that God is just love. Mm. I love that. God is love. But you just go read Revelations. There is a day that God says, I'm done contending with you guys. And all of your super hyper, whatever selfish greed religion that you've got, I want a people who will wholly and wholeheartedly commit themselves to me. And in doing that, I really believe when we say yes to the ridiculous things that God asks us to do, he gives ridiculous blessings. That's good. Ridiculous peace, ridiculous miracles, wholeness in body. You want the manifestations of God, but you don't want it, the price tag that comes with that. Well. <laughs> mm. But Moses objected to God. Think about this. So God's like, I'm going to kill them all. 
God's like, I'm having another flood experience, which he said he'd never send a flood. So he's getting ready to do something besides a flood. I'm going to wipe them all out. Disease. But Moses objected, very much like Jesus, forgive them for they know not what they do. He said, what will the Egyptians think when they hear about it? He asked the Lord. They know full well the power you displayed in rescuing your people from Egypt. If you destroy them right now, the Egyptians are going to send a report to the inhabitants of this land who have already heard that you live among your people. They know the Lord. They know that you've appeared to your people face to face and that your pillar of cloud goes with them and hovers over them. They know that you are with them in the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. Now, if you slaughter all these people with a single blow, which he could, the nations that have heard of your fame will say, the Lord, in other words, Moses, they're not going to say the people couldn't do it. They're going to say the Lord was not able to bring them into the land he swore to them. So he killed them in the wilderness. Hmm. Negotiator. Moses was a negotiator. I love it. Mm -hmm. Please, Lord, pr prove that your power is as great as you say it is and you have claimed. For you said the Lord is slow to anger, filled with unfailing love, forgiving every kind of sin and rebellion, but he does not excuse the guilty. He goes on, he says, in keeping with your magnificence, unfailing love, please pardon the sins of these people just as you've forgiven them since you left, we left Egypt. He, very similar to the fact that Jesus could have called down 10,000 angels and blew everyone up at one time. Mm -hmm. He had that kind of power on the cross. But what did he say? My father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. I mean, here they're, they're killing him. They're persecuting him. And he's asking God not to be angry, but forgive them for they know not what. The, when people persecute you, say false things about you. That's why scripture says, bless them. Bless those who persecute you. Do good to those who despitefully use you or say false things about you. Then the Lord said, I will pardon them as you have requested, but as surely as I live, their people and they will not enter the promised land. In other words, God said, okay, I'll save them today, but they're not going to get to see what I was promising. Only their children 20 and under are going to get to see it. I'm saying right now, God's promises are yes and amen. God's going to do what God's going to do. God's going to bless his people. If you want access to that blessing, you have got to be willing to say some unquestionable yeses to God. You've got to be willing to take those times when God says, will you just walk over there and witness to somebody? Will you just go over there to Walmart and just tell that person that you, that you love them and that God loves them? Will you walk over there and ask that person, how can I pray for you today? When you begin to do unquestionable yeses for God, God will begin to bring you uncommon, fruitful blessings, abundance, miracles, manifestations. You know, there was a time, and I told you at the beginning I was going to tell you this story. It's kind of a long story, but I'm going to tell the shortened version. Because I was in a season, of our, we were in, in North Carolina, and um, I had both of my babies. I was still carrying my excess baby fat, and really I wasn't unhappy with it. I was... You know, nursing and so I was feeling like that little extra probably makes the milk better <laughs> <laughs> um, and I was about 13 percent body fat overweight and um, all of a sudden one day I am in my wake-up time and I hear call Bill the photographer and it was really weird because it wasn't like an audible voice but it just kept coming to me call Bill the photographer well I didn't know anyone named Bill it was just a really weird thing to be going through my head over and over again. Call Bill, the photographer. So it kept going over and over in my head. So I got up that morning and I Googled Bill, the photographer, Raleigh, North Carolina to see, I mean, who is Bill, the photographer? Because I didn't know a Bill, the photographer. And there was only one Bill, the photographer, but he did live in Raleigh, North Carolina. So I thought, okay, well, I'm going to go on this little scavenger hunt of obedience and see what it, where it leads me. So I go to his website and he's a wedding photographer and he's got like all these flowy wedding gown pictures. And I'm like, well, I don't need a wedding picture. <laughs> um, so I picked up the phone and I called him and I said, is Bill available, please? And he said, this is Bill. And I said, hi, Bill, my name is Stacy Wallace, and I wanted to see if you would shoot some headshots for me. And, and he said, okay, uh, 
do you know that I'm a wedding photographer? And I said, oh yes, I went onto your website and I love the fluid movement of your photography. <laughs> like, so he said, okay, well, how did you hear about me? And I said, um, well, Bill, I don't know what you believe, but I woke up this morning and felt like I heard God say, call Bill the photographer. Now the guy's silent. And I said, so uh, I didn't do it at first, but I, I listened to it again and I kept hearing call Bill the photographer. And since I don't know a photographer named Bill, I looked on Google and uh, you were the only Bill on Google in Raleigh, North Carolina. And he says, hang on just a minute, would you please? And he's gone for a second. He comes back and he says, can you, can you say that again, please? I, I'm just going to put you on speaker. I want my wife to hear this. And so I said, okay, so I woke up this morning and I, I really don't have a reason to have headshots, but uh, I heard this voice say, call Bill the photographer. So I Googled it and, and Bill is the only Bill the photographer in Raleigh, North Carolina. And so that's why I'm calling. I'm not sure what the pictures are going to be for, but I just wanted to be obedient. And I hear crying in the background. And Bill gets back on the phone and he said, are you telling me that you think you heard God say, call Bill the photographer, and you obeyed and called me, and you looked me up, and I'm the only Bill? I said, yes. And he says, you're not going to believe this. And I said, okay, maybe I will. <laughs> and he said, last night, my wife and I were on our knees. He said, we're Catholic. We were on our knees in the middle of the living room, crying out to God that we want more. And God, if you're real, reveal yourself to us. We want to know you. We want to know you're real. And he said, and now you're telling me that the very next morning you heard God tell you to call Bill the... He knows my name. I said, not only does he know your name, he knows your profession and clearly he heard your voice. Well, it was an amazing time on the phone. He said, well, I've got to get with you. I want to do this photo shoot as quick as possible. So we did this photo shoot. Again, I didn't have any real purpose for it. It wasn't like I was singing at the time or doing an album or ministering anywhere. I was just being obedient. We went out and as we, I had uh, two or three girls with me from our mentoring program. And as we were going out and he's taking these pictures, he would stop and just start crying. Mm -hmm. And he would say, this is so surreal. I feel like um, I feel like I'm walking with Jesus and his disciples. And I said, well, I can tell you I'm not Jesus, but he does. His spirit lives in all of us. Mm -hmm. And he is having an encounter with you right now, even through us. Long story short, uh, we did the pictures. They were amazing, like the best headshots I've ever gotten in my life, despite all the tears. And it was like six hours of just walking and talking with this guy. That month, all of a sudden, I get a phone call in the middle of the night, I mean, in the middle of the day from a lady that says, hello, my name's Wendy Galley, and I just want to welcome you to the Mrs. North Carolina pageant. Now, for those of you who know me, I'm not a pageant girl, so my background, I'm a black belt in karate, basketball player. I would be more likened to be called a tomboy or a scrapper than I would be a pageant girl. Mm-hmm. And... Mom had signed you up, though. So this lady, and I told the lady, I said, I'm sorry, I think you have the wrong Stacy. She said, Stacy Wallace? And I said, yes. And she said, well, I've got your application right here. I said, well, I didn't apply. Thank you, though. And I hung up. Well, this happened over and over and over again. And finally, she called back seven times. Before the seventh time, she was persistent. <laughs> I called my mom. And I said, Mom, did you enter me into something? Because this lady is persistent. She's calling over and over and over again. And my mom goes, oh my goodness, did they call you? I said, yeah, but what are you doing? I'm not doing a pageant. She said, honey, you told me last week that you'd do anything for God. And she said, and I saw that ad online and I just thought, oh, that would be so good for Stacy to better relate to women. She could do a pageant. She said, honey, it could be a platform and you could reach more people. You said you said you would say yes. She said, I'm just asking, just pray about it. So that night I prayed about it. I couldn't sleep. And I'm thinking, God, you would not do this to me. I'm like 13% overweight. I have to wear a swimsuit for this. 
And I don't even know how to walk like that, like that whole, I mean, I can walk like a model because I used to model, but that's different where you have to like make your body look right for those swimsuits. And I was like, I, I don't even want to. So in the middle of the night, I got up, I looked up the Mrs. America pageant and the Mrs. World pageant. These are like 19 year old girls. I was at the time 33 ish or 30 ish, something like that. 35. 35. Thank you. It's just, you didn't have to go there. 35. Middle 30 ish. <laughs> and I looked and I'm, they're perfect. Their bodies are perfect. They haven't had babies. I'm like coming out of my second baby. And so I'm thinking of all the reasons why I shouldn't do this. So I thought, you know what? I'll put it before God and I'll let Larry, if God wants me to do this, I'll do it. But I'm going to let Larry be the final factor. So when you woke up that next morning, you were getting ready to go to work and you're, you're Having eating breakfast. your Cheerios in the mm -hmm. kitchen. It was Cheerios. And I said, honey, what do you think about me entering the Mrs. America pageant? And he spewed his Cheerios across the kitchen. <laughs> I thought she was joking. <laughs> it made me laugh. And so Cheerios just came out. <laughs> spewed his Cheerios. I was like, well, that wasn't exactly what I, he goes, why would you want to do that? And I said, I don't. <laughs> But like this thing happened in the, in this, this lady called and my mom and he's like, well, what is your mom thinking? Mm -hmm. And I said, I don't know. And he says, well, let's just Ben Franklin it. So we sat down before he went to work and we did this Ben Franklin of pros and cons and everything on the pros were, I could reach more people. I could get in the best shape of my life. I could get sponsors to help me get in shape. I could lose the excess baby fat. People could come to the Lord. You know, we've said that we would say yes to any. So all these positive things. And the reasons why not were pride, 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 ego, pride, <laughs> ego. And so I ended up that day calling Wendy Galley and I called her back and I said, hey, um, about that application, so I think I'm going to say yes. And she said, oh, honey, well, you better hurry because the cutoff is today at five o'clock and you have to have a headshot in by five o'clock today. <laughs> and what did I just have because I called Bill? Mm -hmm. A perfect headshot. Yep. I ended up winning the North Carolina pageant, ended up going on to Mrs. America, winning fourth runner up, having five women come to the Lord at the Mrs. America pageant who had never accepted Jesus before. God wants to use us. He has a land flowing with milk and honey. He wants to give you the abundance you've been believing for, dreaming for, but you have got to say yes. We have got to say yes. I just preached myself happy. Good. I love it. Because if we quit, mm -hmm. we will not see the land. If we listen to the voices of naysayers or opposition, we will not see the abundance of what God wants to bring us. Mm -hmm. That's good. Will you say yes? Unquestionable obedience yields uncommon fruit. That's good. Whew. Pray for us. It's going to be a great week. Father, it we is. just thank you, Lord, for man everything that you've laid out in front of us. And I thank you, Father God, that we won't listen thank to the you, voices Jesus. But God, I thank you that we hear your voice only and the voice of another we will not follow. God, we are going to say yes. And God, everything that you have for us, Lord, every promise that you have in the Bible, God, we accept and, mm. and we are thankful for. And so God, as we go forth into this week, we thank you, Father God, thank that you, uh, we focus on, on you. We do everything we can to make you big in the marketplace. And God, I thank you, Father God, for the favor that you have upon us and the blessings that you have for each and every one of the people that are, going to, that are watching this video. Thank you, In Father Jesus' God. name we pray. Amen. Amen. We love you guys. Comment in there. Tell us what are you facing and how can we be in agreement with you. And then for those of you who are out doing the street ministry talking, which I hope you all are, um, send us your results this week. Who are you talking to? Are you laying hands on people? Are you praying for them, baptizing people? You know it's on you. Jesus put that requirement on us to go out and uh, help people into this life we call kingdom life. We love you guys. Have a great, great week. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.